Hey everyone, it's Kim, the Homeschooling Grammy, and it's Word Wednesday time again. And if you're unfamiliar with Word Wednesday, on uh, Wednesdays, I'd like to share scripture. Um, and most times it is scripture that um, has touched me in some way, shape, or form. And this week is no different. So if this is something that you're interested in, please stick around and we will get started. of a rough week it was a really rough week for me physically um, with my chronic illness um, so the scripture that I am sharing is scripture that really spoke to my heart during this last week um, and just reminded me that although things can be very difficult for me physically um, that it, it's okay and it will be okay and that this too shall pass. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share several scripture with you and we'll get started. So the first one I'd like to read to you is from 1 Peter 5.10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And... You know, Jesus Christ himself was not exempt from suffering. Like, he suffered ultimately for us, and he did it willingly. And he did it not having to, but he did it because he loved us. So, with this scripture, I just have to remind myself that, you know, I'm being called into his eternal glory. And even though I'm suffering now, it's like it says, you have suffered a little while but he himself will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Um, because sometimes I don't feel firm and I don't feel steadfast. And I certainly don't feel strong. <laughs> um, when anybody who has a chronic illness that involves physical pain, because, you know, chronic illness can come in many different forms, but when it, when it involves physical pain and um, for those of you who don't, know what kind of an illness I have. It is called trigeminal neuralgia. Um, I was diagnosed with it two years ago. I had been having symptoms before that. I was completely incapacitated. I could not function. I could not even barely get off of the couch. I am a miracle. And even though that I have had a flare just recently, one of the worst ones I've had in quite some time, um, it is still nothing compared to what it used to be. And that is God. Um, so I just, you know, I just have to remind myself during those times when you have that kind of physical pain. And I think I got off track, but trigeminal neuralgia is an illness that affects the tri trigeminal. I'm all over myself today. Trigeminal nerve that is in here. And it runs from your brain and it comes out into here. It has like three different branches that go like this. And so when I'm having a flare, that nerve is misfiring. And in it's misfiring, it is causing pain in my face. And the pain in my face can come in all different ways. It can become burning. It can be searing. It can be um, like shocks of lightning. It can feel like stabbing of a knife. It can feel like... Um, like a burning sensation, a tingling, um, weird sensation. Um, it can cause like twitching. It can cause all kinds of weird and strange things. And so when I'm in one of those, this verse I have to remember is that he's going to make me strong. He's going, you know, he's going to make me firm and he's going to make me steadfast because I am not able to do any of those things. And, you know, you get into yourself and you feel like, um, gosh, I don't know, like this is really hard. And because I hadn't had that bad of a flare in a long time, it really, you know, it, 
knocked me off my feet, quite literally. Um, but anyways, enough about that. Let's go back to what God's word says. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. <clears throat> and when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And that is exactly what this illness feels like at times. It does, it literally feels like you're on fire. Like you're on fire on the inside. Like just, it's blazing heat and fire and bolt, electrical bolts. And just, it's so hard to explain to somebody who hasn't felt it before. But that's, this passage like jumped off the page at me. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Um, and I mean, obviously this has nothing to do with my illness. It has something, you know, it has, but it just spoke to me because what it, you know, when it was talking about the fire and that's what this illness feels like is fire and it's, a, it's a rare illness and it's one that causes sensations of burning and searing. And, um, it's also known as the suicide disease. And so I'm so grateful because I, I'm so fortunate and I'm so grateful to God because, you know, so many people who have this illness, um, haven't been able to get it under control. Um, my, my prayers were answered two years ago, like literally within minutes I had answered prayer. Um, I was having the flare, like I didn't. I had just found out what it was. Um, it had a name up to that point. I didn't even know what I had, but I had finally gotten a diagnosis and I had been literally either in bed or on the couch. Um, just in so much pain. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I couldn't swallow. Taking a shower, brushing my teeth, touching my face, brushing my hair. Like I couldn't do any of those things without excruciating pain. And so I had become a member of this trigeminal group and I've since started my own. If you're interested, I can leave a link to my Facebook group, but I had been a part of this group and it was kind of dark, not kind of dark. It was dark. Um, everybody was talking about, um, like their whole identity was this illness and it was no, there was no hope in this group and it was sad and, um, you know, people just wondering like why they have to live with this horrendous illness. And I didn't see any like light in this group and somebody finally said something about a natural approach to, um, to dealing with this illness. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I was like, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I believe that God can can show me something different, some, something. And um, because of me responding to this person, all these other people like jumped on me like immediately. Um, you must not really have this illness because if you did, you would be taking A, B, C, and D drugs and you would be looking into brain surgery and you would be doing all of these things that you should be doing because if you really have TN, then you know, um, why would you not? And, you know, they're, they're pummeling me and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like you have no idea. I can't even get off the couch and you're pummeling me. And, um, I go into the kitchen and my husband's in there and I'm sobbing. And I said to him, I'm standing on the word of God right here, right now. And I'm declaring that he is going to show me the way he's going to give me a way that I can deal with with this illness and that I can handle this illness and he's going to heal me. And within five minutes, I get a private message from somebody and I couldn't even tell you their name. Now I get a private message from somebody I don't even know. And they were like, I saw what happened to you in that group. And I wanted to reach out to you because I wanted to share with you what I've been doing and how much it has helped me. Um, and it was answered prayer. And I won't get into huge details. If you guys want more details, I can share more details about 
what was shared with me and what happened and the miracle that literally took place within that same day. Um, so anyways, let me move on to the next verse. And the next verse comes from Romans 5, 3, and 4. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And I have hope. I have hope that someday I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus. And I also have hope that maybe someday there will be a cure for this illness before I go home to be with the Lord. Um, but, you know, we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Isn't that true? Like when you are deepest in any kind of suffering, whether it's physical suffering or spiritual suffering or, you know, um, any kind of suffering that you could think of when you're in that place, what does it force you to do? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, what is suffering force you to do? It forces you on your knees. It forces you to get closer to God because there is, there is no other, like I can't imagine, like I feel my heart breaks for the people that have this chronic illness that don't know Jesus Christ because without him, there is no way that I could push forward one day into the next. There's, there's no way. And to be without hope and that group that I was in was without hope because people, the majority of people didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They had no hope. And I have come across some other people um, since then that have this illness um, and it's rare illness. Um, I could give statistics, but I'm not going to do any of that here. Um, and it's funny because the people that I have come across that have a relationship with Jesus Christ are the ones that are more open to something other than extreme things that you can do to your body medically. Um, and the ones that are do not have the relationship with Jesus Christ and aren't able to stand on the word of God that says that he will heal you, that he will make you well. They are without hope and it's heartbreaking to me because although I, I don't not have this illness anymore. Like, I mean, obviously I still have it, but the difference is night and day and it, I stand on God's word. It's because of that prayer and desperation that I am able to do the things that I do, that I am able to um, put one foot in front of the other every single day. Um, because with this illness, there's always some level of pain. But when you go into a major flare, um, your world stops. It literally stops you in your tracks. Um, it is known as the most painful, the most painful thing that you could ever have. There is nothing more painful um, recorded. Um, even childbirth doesn't come close and I've done that. So I have perspective. So, you know, even though that they write, you know, you can read all this documented stuff. I can tell you for certain <laughs> that there's nothing that comes close. Um, but I'm so grateful. And I just wanted to say that um hold on no matter what your circumstance is no matter um what kind of trial that you may be going through no matter what kind of suffering that you may be going through and i know right now there are so many people that are suffering you know we're dealing with this virus and we're dealing with you know just that's the new thing on this or on, you know, going right now, but there's so many people that have cancer and they have all kinds of other ailments and just be in prayer for these people, show them God's love, um, and pray for them, pray for them. If they don't know Jesus Christ, pray for them, share with them. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, today's as good a day as any.
So God bless and take care. And I'll talk to you again soon.